Good afternoon, buenas tardes. Um, very content to have experienced a, a wonderful night in Providence Park, um, getting the fans back. I mean, we have had fans um, at a, some percentage and it's been great, but uh, having the building basically almost full or, or kind of full, it was incredible. I mean, the energy, the passion, um, it felt uh, so far uh, that we had a crowd like that, and and uh, and it was a special night. Um, we were able to get a very good result against a very good team on a very solid performance from our players, from my players, um, in a, a very good first half in which we were able to score two goals. Uh, we uh, had just one moment in which we allowed them to penetrate in behind us and that's how they scored the goal. But as much as we allow them to have the ball um, in the second half, um, we closed the spaces very well. We always had uh, players around uh, them in every good area. And, um, and our counters were very dangerous. And uh, if we uh, uh, were a little bit sharper, it, we could have capitalized in some of the counters that we had uh, at the moment. Um, of course, we want to be a team that can uh, continue to grow more with the ball and attacking uh, as we have been, you know, many times before. But in this particular, you know, game, uh, uh, the performance that we put in, the tactical discipline that the guys uh, put in this game was phenomenal in order for us to deserve uh, a result that uh, we worked very hard for and, and that we needed to accumulate three points and, and still stay in a very competitive place on the table in the West Conference. So a great night. And now we have to prepare for Houston, another difficult game, a, a game against a team that uh, uh, TAP has uh, given them good ideas, that believes in, in the direction that they that they are going and, and under conditions, as we know in Houston, that are difficult with Again, a team that we have to manage well because he has to endure uh, another two, you know, close games right after. Uh, we have to play right after Minnesota at home. And then uh, another game uh, that was moved earlier, um, which I wish we didn't happen that way because the space that we had to play the game against Austin the following week was perfect for us to be able to regen and get to the game uh, in the best condition, but they moved it um, earlier to July 1st, and now we have to deal with three matches in, in, in a matter of a week. So we will be prepared and, and the guys are ready for it. Thank you. We will start with or start questions off with Sam Stejskow. Thanks, guys. Gio, thank you for taking the time. Appreciate it. You mentioned it just there uh, at the end, the quick turnarounds that are coming. I believe you guys have 10 midweek games the rest of the season, about 40% of your remaining schedule. Obviously, you've dealt with a, a huge number of injuries and absences already, um, but can you recall a time when, when you've had so many midweek games as a coach? And what are the conversations that are that you're having with you know, your medical staff, your performance staff, your players uh, to try and manage through this? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, yeah, we, had, we had a very uh, difficult schedule last year after we came back from MLS back tournament. Um, we had so many matches consecutive. But even though we had two DPs um, that were not available, we had a deep roster that we could rotate and and manage the situation. <laughs> Tough is when you have a limited amount of players, you still have some players that are injured. So you have some players that are coming back uh, and they cannot play uh, more than certain minutes. You have players playing in Copa America and and who knows if uh, Gold Cup as well. Um, so it is a lot more difficult to manage the group and in and, and, and those moments, uh, you know, you, you need your full staff to come up with ideas, to converse from the fitness, you know, areas to uh, the performance to make sure that we uh, think at everything possible 
to be ready for what is coming. And, and as you mentioned, sometimes it comes in four matches in, in a matter of two weeks, and then there's a, a break of two weeks, and then another four matches in between weeks. It's been tough. For us, it's been difficult. Looking at um, the CONCA champions and you know the, the challenges that we had uh, in the CONCA champions, I was very proud in the way we performed, I, and we tried to go all the way through, but it's been very difficult. Um, with this said, we work here not with uh, complaining with what we don't have, but it's how to make sure that we confront every situation the best possible way to get points and, and to keep a very healthy mentality. And, and that's what we have on the, on, on the team. Next, we'll go to Richard Farley. Coach, my question kind of taps into something that Sam just mentioned. I wanted to focus in on the opportunities that Jimmy Chara and Felipe Mora have right now playing for their countries in a major tournament. Obviously, you still have four or five other significant injuries that you have to deal with, but it is a great opportunity for those players. How do you look at both sides of that equation, recognizing the challenges that it brings to the team, but also recognizing the opportunity that these players have earned? Yeah, another great question. Um, so the, the, we have to we have to look at the situation. Of course, I, I wish I had a full roster in order to have my strongest team available and in a deep team to be able to confront these uh, matches that we have consecutive uh, in this season. But I, I think maybe because I was a player, I can understand better uh, these situations. And you cannot deny this this moment to Mora and Jimmy that they have the opportunity to, to participate in Copa America, that they have the opportunity to be able to represent their country, and still be you know in in a very high competition with uh, you know a confederation that is a very tough one, and and you want to be part of it. You want to represent your country, and and you want to compete in these games, and and know that you participate in, in a Copa America. So. Uh, we have to understand their excitement. Um, of course, they would have wanted to stay here to compete and be with us. But we also have to understand that right now they got a great opportunity to be there and we have to support them. Um, we wish that they could play a little bit more, that way they stay more competitive. We saw Jimmy last night participate in, in the match uh, for Colombia. And hopefully Felipe will have the chance to be able to play minutes. But the fact that they're too um, you know, players from Portland in two of the best national teams in South America right now. I think it says a lot of what Portland team is, is doing and, and where the league is at the moment as well. Next, we'll go to Matt Pence. Hey, Coach. I know Blanco waited a long time for, for his comeback. Did you get a sense for how kind of emotional it was for him to, to kind of get back on the field and how much of a boost can he provide to your group um, given that he seems to kind of be an inspirational figure in the locker room? Yeah, so no, listen, you know how Seba is, you know, as a, pers as a person, uh, the, his personality is uh, very important in the locker room as, you know, Diego Chara, Valeri, Mabiala, you know, the leaders uh, of, the, of the team, they're, they're very important and they are important in their own way. And, and Seba is one that is very competitive. Uh, he wants to win things. He wants to win games. He wants to do the best that he came on the field. So having him back is, you know, besides his quality uh, is phenomenal. Um, and uh, finally having him on the bench after so uh, many, you know, moments that we have to go through, so much time that he had to recover and then injure twice uh, a muscle injury and that prevent him from being earlier playing. It's been uh, tough. So that night was special. And he came back maybe at, at the right moment to, in, to, to, to be part of this amazing night. And, and even though I know that there's people <laughs> around me that wanted him to come early, we have to be smart in the way we play him. Uh, and he could only come in those minutes that he came in. And we saw how special he is, that uh, little by little in the game, he started having more confidence. He started looking sharp. He started looking closer again to the Seba that we know. And, and he made some very good plays when he came into the game. But we have to be very smart. We want him to endure, give him more minutes, build him up little by little, and he's going to get there. The fact that he's now 
on the bench and available is, uh, is huge. And, and that's why I thought it was a phenomenal night. Next, we'll go to Kyle Garcia. Coach, kind of circling back to this idea of the um, tight schedule um, that you guys are working with this week. Um, with the big win on Saturday, you mentioned that it was a big positive for your team, and there are a lot of positives, obviously, within that match. But I was just wondering, how positive is it and how important is it to when you know you have an upcoming stretch of really tight games um, or games that are just you know close together, how important is it to start off, um, especially coming back from international break, um, starting off with a big win at home in front of a big crowd? How does that help kind of give you guys momentum um, heading into a big week? It is very important uh, because if you look at uh, our last uh, four matches, um, not three matches, the last three matches, um, with a limited amount of players that we had, we have been able to win three games and lose one. So we come in into this moment in which the team feels that we can achieve things. Um, coming from the break, as you mentioned, and winning against a very good team, we have to listen. We have to say what is what is right. Uh, Peter's done a great job um, with Kansas City. They they are good ball possession team. They have their ideas very clear, and they are a tough team to play. Regardless to the fact that we have had the better of them um, in the past five games, uh, I think we only lost one. But they're a very good team. In credit completely to to Peter for the job that he's done. But we, with the limited number that we have, we have to be very pragmatic, very smart in the way we go and, and understand how to manage and control matches with the ball and sometimes without the ball and make sure that we know who's going to come in at the right times and who's going to come to the following match. And uh, as much as we ask the players to only think about the match and what they have in task in that moment, the coaching staff have to think beyond because we need to endure. Our, our roster is limited still at the moment. We're starting to get uh, players back. I mean, having 20 players available, uh, even though no full minutes, it was already a, a huge change for us this past weekend, not having only 16. And we keep on getting better and better, but we have to manage uh, these ma this, this matches in a very smart way with the players that we have, with the way we play. And then one thing that I have to maybe complain a little bit is the Austin game that was pushed to Thursday when we had it on Saturday or Sunday. Um, we wish that, that that game would have stayed in that weekend and would have been much better for us to provide that game with more quality. Uh, but it was pushed and we have to just deal with what we have in front of us. We have time for just a couple more coaches to be out of here in a few minutes, but we'll go to Tyler Tatchman next. Hey coach, I hope you're doing well. Um, I, I know Claudio Bravo was someone that came or was signed this winter. Um, what was your first impression of him and how would you describe him now that you've gotten to know him for a little bit longer? Looking at him when we scouted him, um, we knew that he was the right player to come in. We had no doubt that of the list that we had, he was the better option. We, uh, through friends and people that I know, we, know, we knew also um, how many teams were looking at him in Europe and how close he was to go to Europe. And we got fort fortunate to have been able to bring him to Portland, a player that uh, is very important, to, very important to the national team of Argentina going into the Olympics. And from day one that he came in, he worked. I mean, you can see at the beginning that he needed uh, in the first few training uh, to get confident, to understand the league, to get used to it. But you, you saw his potential. And I thought that since he's been here, he's been very, very good. Yes, there's been moments in which uh, maybe he has made a mistake here or a situation here or that I think people have taken those moments and, 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 and making it a little bit bigger than what they are to him. But his performance have been growing game by game. And, and I thought that this final game, it was his best performance by far solid, uh, defensively solid, offensively for a young player. He looked very mature, uh, matching up against a player like Russell, who's very experienced. Um, he, I mean, was very much uh, 
an important piece of, of this victory this past game. I, even in a moment in which we made a, a mistake coming into the second half with a Loria giving a, 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 a pass back, uh, that count, you know, that they were able to find space and, and almost get to a position to score. Bravo came in, close, blocked the shot, and uh, he was everywhere. So we're very content with him. I think he can still grow, he can still, still be better. We will miss him when he goes to the Olympics with the national team, which he will be leaving uh, towards the end of this month. And, uh, and then hopefully he, he has a great uh, competition in getting back to us and continue to, to develop.